Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I'm the Cyber of Guru. Thank you for watching. So if you've been following this channel for a while, you've noticed that I've done some videos most recently on what is now known as Autodesk Eagle CAD. And Eagle CAD is a program that's been around for many, many years. It's been free for hobbyists to use to make printed circuit boards. And I've done a couple of videos on the program since it's been taken over or merged with, or however you want to look at it, with Eagle CAD. And they've, I'm sorry, with Fusion 360. Uh, so they, Autodesk has made a number of uh, improvements in the program that I find very valuable. And one of the things that I've run into most recently is I'm looking for an easy way to panelize a printed circuit board. Now you're saying, hey, what the heck is panelizing a printed circuit board? I will show you. Well, let's say you have a printed circuit board that looks something like this. And uh, it's quite expensive to make a printed circuit board, so it's cheaper to make a whole bunch of these at once. So it might look like something like this. You can see in this particular example, there are four separate printed circuit boards all on one. And so the cost to make this printed circuit board is roughly the cost to make this one single printed circuit board. You can see it's significantly more economical to make four at once than it is to make one at once one at once right so this is what panelization is is you take a design and you multiple you replicate it across the printed circuit board as many times as you need to so that you keep a fixed panel size because you're being charged when you make a printed circuit board based on the square uh, you know the square centimeter square inch of the printed circuit board itself uh, regardless of how many designs are on it so uh, Eagle has a script, it's called Panelize, or a little operation now, they moved into an operation called Panelize. And uh, you know, I run it a couple times and I've kind of left scratching my head saying, well, what the heck did it do? Because it didn't replicate anything. Uh, so I dug into a little bit more most recently, the way I've been making panelizations, uh, panelized print circuit boards in the past as I've been using an external uh, program to run the, run the Panelize operation. And so, I dug into the script and it turns out all it does is it actually copies all your text images or your text information to a separate layer and then you're left to your own devices to copy the, the details of the print circuit board. And I'm like, well, that seems a little weird. There should be an easier way to do that. So of course, I dug into it a little more and I found this script called um, Array, Array uh, you, you, what is known as ULP or User Language Processing. Um, and it actually creates an array of the board that you have selected. Uh, but the script didn't work or doesn't work with the new software. Uh, it works with the old version of the software and it uses some commands that don't work anymore. So, of course, you know, I thought it'd be a simple change and I would go in and I'd fix it and update it. And um, it, uh, uh, it, <laughs> it didn't take me long to get the script working. Uh, and it also did not take me long to figure out that the script didn't do what I wanted it to do exactly. You had to hard code a bunch of values and and just the way that it operated just didn't suit me. So of course, what did I do is, um, I can't say that I rewrote it, um, but I heavily edited the script. And I wanna show you uh, the new script and the power of the new panelization or the array making script of the printed circuit board. So let's cut over to the Eagle Cat. Okay, so here we are in Eagle CAD, and this is a, a, a picture of the board that I've created. Now, I've already run that panelization script, so it has moved the text uh, from the text layer to the actual, what is known as underscore text layers. Uh, you can see here the board is 0.15 inches tall by th uh, 3.6 inches long. Now, if you were to make just each individual of these boards, you wouldn't get very good bang for your buck because you'd be paying for a much larger panel than you actually get. So it is uh, significantly more uh, inexpensive or more economical to panelize this. So let's go ahead and run the user script. I'm gonna pull it up here, do this guy. So in this case, it's gonna ask you, it says the board is, you know, is, is approximately 3,600 um, by 149 uh, mils, which is uh, thousands of an inch. So, and that's consistent with the dimensions here that you see. So we want to make an array panel of one by, let's do three. We'll leave the origin set to zero, zero. What this does is this sets the origin of where you want your new panel to start. So if you wanted to keep this board around, uh, you would probably want to move it up in the Y direction. 
uh, spacing again zero because we're only going to make one in the x direction but in the y direction we want to make the spacing larger than the bore size a board size and leave a little gap so we can cut the boards apart so in this case the board is a 0.15 and I want a 0.25 I want a point uh, I want an eighth of an inch reveal so that's 0.125 so if you add that that's 275 uh, mills and then put the, the the top layer on T names. You can put it on any layer you want, but in this case, the cam script that I have has it defaulted to uh, underscore T names. And the same with the bottom. Uh, the file name here, which is one of the changes I made to the script, it actually has a file name that you can select, and it defaults to whatever the name of your board is, plus this script dimension here or script um, extension. And then it defaults the file location to your current project directory so you can create this new script file. So it's gonna, I'm gonna click OK. It's gonna say, do you really wanna do this? I say, yes, I do. It wrote the file, uh, but look, nothing happened on the screen here. That's because in Eagle CAD, uh, it outputs a file that you then turn around and need to process. There is a way to process it automatically, but I didn't necessarily wanna do that here because uh, I wanna give the user the option of being able to run this at their leisure, and here's why, because I'm going to hit uh, Control New or Propeller New for me. I'm going to get a whole new board, right? And now I'm going to run the script. Here, it's this guy I just created tonight. Or open this guy up. And you can see what it's doing is it just literally runs the script and recreates uh, your printed circuit board layer by layer, signal by signal, trace by trace. And I'm going to turn off some of the clutter here. There you go. So what you're left here with is just the bottom and top traces, the silk screen, which it takes the name and it just replicates it. So if you were to just to take this board flat out and copy it, what it would have done is recreated every one of these symbols individually. So instead of ending up with LED 1, 2 here, and LED 1 and 2 here, you would end up with, let's see, that is LED 18. This would have been LED 19, 20, 21, 22, and so on. So what this, uh, the combination of the two scripts does is it actually kind of fixes your board in time. Uh, you can still edit it and move things around if we were to turn on our origins here and then go ahead and try and move things around. We can still move these things around. You can see these are live wires as it were. Uh, do that. You can move the parts around just as if you were editing the printed circuit board. So it's still a quote unquote real printed circuit board. It's not fake by any stretch of the imagination, um, but it does, it has eliminated these, um, the, the designators as variables. Okay, so that was the script. Uh, so it does a lot of things that the uh, default script or the script that I found online doesn't do. Uh, first off, it's very, it, it's much more intuitive in how you select the array size um, it allows you to specify the file name and the file location in advance as opposed to hard coding into the script, which is a super big deal. And it also allows you to select the layer in which it ultimately puts the text on uh, in the drop downs there, which is something the previous script did not do. So, hey, look, you know, I, I hope I'm going to post this online. I hope anyone who wants to use this finds it super useful. Um, uh, you know, if you want to, you know, edit it and fork it and all this other business, feel free to do so. Uh, to me, it makes things a lot easier. I've used this to create a panelized board just recently. And so uh, it's it, it, to me, it was significantly more easy to use than the previous set of instructions. So uh, if you want more details or you have any questions, please leave them down below. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, please. If you don't like, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Don't forget to subscribe. Ring that bell if you would. It's very important these days. And uh, have a great night, everyone.